Welcome and thank you for tuning in today. My name is Elizabeth Anukwa and today I have with me a very special guest, real estate mogul, Mr. Eberichi Okeke. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So today we'll be covering the topic on real estate. Hmm. Many want to know. I already know some things, but I'm sure our viewers would like to know many things. First of all, before we jump into the topic, can you kindly let our viewers know how long you've been in the business? Well, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I've actually been in the business for right about two years, not so long ago. Not so long but... ago. And can you let us know what you were doing prior to getting into the whole real estate business? Um, prior to becoming a real estate agent and a real estate investor, I was uh, a telecommunication engineer. Wow. Okay. Um, I worked about seven years with Verizon Wireless. Nice. Yeah. So what made you get into the real estate industry? Interesting. Um, I think it was about building a, a generational wealth. I got tired of working the nine to five, the regular nine to five job, mm -hmm. and I needed something to, you know, to, to do for my own self, and that's how I got here. So you wanted to build legacy and have something for your kids. That's right. And that's one thing I that's believe right. that Nigerians have to start working on. Um, you know, we come to America. The supposed land of milk and honey. I mean, it's great, but they think working two, three jobs, nine to fives is mm -hmm. fulfilling, and you're doing mm -hmm. something for your children. But mm -hmm. they don't know. That. I mean, I mean, and there's nothing wrong. In, in, there's nothing in wrong with it. Absolutely. Job, but it comes to a point mm -hmm. where you have to um, let that go. Yes. If you if you really have like an entrepreneurial mindset, if you want to build wealth, you don't want to work for people. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anybody uh, become a millionaire of course. doing a nine to five, nine to five. job. So you, you start you start thinking outside the box. What right. is it that I can do for myself? Okay. That's where the entrepreneur mindset comes in, right. and that's what brought me into real estate. Yeah. So keyword generational yeah. wealth. Yeah. Good. Um. So let's jump into real estate. Let's do so it. you know, a lot of people say renting is better than purchasing a property, and people say purchasing a property is better than renting. Can you kindly let us know the difference Listen, and what is best? There is never a time that renting is, uh, is better than yeah. owning a property. Mm -hmm. It's never a time. When you rent a property, you're technically building wealth for your landlord. You're helping your landlord pay his mortgage. Yes. So in any way you look at it, owning a property is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it doesn't take that much to own a property. Right. I think that's one of the things that I want us to talk about in this. In, oh, we'll, we'll in get this. to that. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, personally, for me, I believe that renting, like you said, is a waste of money. And when you do have your own property or your own mortgage, you actually build equity, right. which a lot of people right. don't know about. They think, right. oh, you know, you're signing your life away or you're locked into something that you don't benefit from. But from knowledge, I know that once you have your own property, even if you decide you don't want to reside in that on that actual property, right? You know, you can rent it out. That that's that's the thing. Um, yeah, rental well, property. Yeah, one thing mm -hmm. I want people to know is your first property has to be a rental property. If you are an investor, if you if you have a business mindset, mm -hmm. your first property has to be a rental property. Mm -hmm. In that case, you have you live in a, in a in a unit, and then you have a tenant pay rent and then you in turn use the rent to pay your mortgage. Pay your mortgage. Right? Mm -hmm. You can do that for a year and two and then you move out and get a second property, mm -hmm. which could be uh, a single family property. Perfect. Okay. So can you let our viewers know the process it takes? I know a lot of people are skeptical about it. They think it's, you know, something that will take you almost a year to do. To do. And I know your job, like we discussed earlier, because we we are talking earlier, you want to make this process as easy as possible, as possible for our people. So what are the steps? And before we jump into the steps, can mm -hmm. you let us know what one should have in terms of credit score, in terms right. of savings? Right. What should you be able to bring to the table to make you fully well-equipped to right. go into that I, I think I was, I was talking to you earlier. Um, if you rent a property mm -hmm. and your rent expires and you need to move into another property as a rental. Right. The amount of money you spend in, in getting in securing that rental property, mm -hmm. it's almost the same amount as your down payment in getting your own property. Because mm -hmm. the landlord would want you to have one one and a half month security of deposit. Yeah. You would help you they would do a credit check on you. 
So instead of you renting a property, it makes no sense. It makes absolute sense for you to buy a property. Right. Now, you don't have to have much to be able to qualify and buy your property. You just need to have a, a 620 credit score and up. Okay. You need to be in a job for two years. So what that means is you must have filed your tax return for two consecutive years. Okay. So the bank looks at it like you're working, you have a 620 score and above, and you have a little bit of down payment to purchase a property. Okay. So when we talk about down payment, we're not talking about a whole lot of money. I was speaking to a friend that said with $15,000, you can actually be a homeowner mm -hmm. of a multi-property. What I mean by that is you can get a $350,000 multi-property mm -hmm. and you put down a 3.5% as a first home buyer. You put down mm -hmm. a 3.5% which is about $12,250 and your closing cost mm -hmm. and all that. So mm -hmm. with $15,000 in your bank account, you can buy your own property. You can rent out a unit and live mm -hmm. on a second mm -hmm. unit and technically leave rent free, mortgage free, mm -hmm. and have your rental pay your mortgage. Okay. So, so $15,000. So $15,000 and more is ideal okay. for you to get. But what about a single home or a town home? Same it thing. should be like a little less. I know some people, you should have roughly. So, so yeah, it's, it's 15, kind of, okay. it's, it's a 3.5% of the purchase price right. for a first time buyer, okay. FHA. Mm -hmm. First time buyer is 3.5%. Mm -hmm. And then you include the closing cost to that. So Got it. Approximately from around fifteen thousand mm -hmm. and more, okay. and most of us get fifteen thousand anyways. Anyways, you file yes. your taxes, yes, right? You file your taxes, mm -hmm. you get you get refund back. Especially those with kids, right? You know, <laughs> that, that's about fifteen thousand, right? Yes, yes. We we got um stimulus during the COVID time, I did which is about well, <laughs> some people got stimulus during the COVID time, which is about twelve hundred, six hundred, and right, right, about. Right. When you add that to your tax return, oh, yeah, that right. gives you fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. When you have that sitting in your bank account mm -hmm. and you have a credit score of 620 mm -hmm. and you have a job. So is that what pre-qualifies you? That's what pre-qualifies you. Because I know that's the first step. You can look at right. properties all you want with a realtor, but right. um, you have to be pre-qualified. So right. those are the first steps. So pre-qualifications pre pre means mm -hmm. that the bank says, they look at you and say, hey, and we're willing to borrow you this amount okay. of money. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, what, that's the first step. You okay. get the pre-approval letter. And then you come to Ross, okay. then we help you find out, you know, find the property that you want to buy. Okay, so you said us. Who do you work for? Right. So <laughs> uh, that's a good question. So um, I'm with One Boy Realty. Okay. Uh, we're on Hillside, New Jersey. Oh, perfect. Uh, we, we, we're one of the best in the industry. I uh, We don't only do um, uh, com um, single properties. We do commercial for properties. Sure. We do short sales. Okay, so um, can you let us know the difference between FHA loan and a conventional loan? Because I know first time home buyers is great, FHA, great. so conventional. So what is the difference between the two? So what so, you? so FHA is typically for a first home buyer as it goes, it's a federal housing administration. Okay. So, so they give out those loans for mm -hmm. first home buyers, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you have, conventional is pretty much for a second home buyer okay. and more. Or for an investor, so to say. So you are only allowed to use one heavy chain per person. Mm -hmm. So let's say you buy your first property, you cannot, you can no longer qualify for a FHA loan. So your next property is considered an investment property. You, you they consider you an investor. Okay. So you you go to a conventional loan where you have to put on more than payment. Remember we spoke earlier that um, mm -hmm. uh, FHA is at 3.5% yes. of mm -hmm. the purchase price. Mm -hmm. So what that means is if the purchase price of the house is $350,000, mm -hmm. for FHA you're putting at 3.5%, which is about $12,250. Okay. Okay. So now when you have your first home, the next home is considered an investor's nice. home. Okay. So you go for a conventional. Okay. So, you know, we're still technically in a pandemic, right? Right. And if you follow the trends, we are currently in a seller's market, they say. Mm -hmm. And the rates are pretty low. So is this the best time to purchase a property or should people wait? Because I've also heard rumors that the market is going to crash. I don't know how true that is. Okay. But what is your take on 
it's, it's listen it's always there's no there's no wrong time to do something right mm -hmm. right i feel this is the right time for you to get into real estate right buying your first home remember i spoke about your first home has to be a multi-family home right so right now is the seller's market fine and good but mm -hmm. the rates are low right now mm -hmm. My customers come to me and I and when I speak to couples and, and find out what they want to do, I usually advise them get a multi-family house. Okay. When you get a multi-family house, you don't worry about the rate. If the rate goes up, it comes down, the market crash, the rent remains the same. Okay. The rent remains the same. Okay. The rentals, you know, there's never a time that rent is gonna crash. Right. Right. So whatever, the loan, the um the, the interest rate comes down, the tenant is still paying you the money. That what if they can't pay? pay? Like, right. let's be realistic because right. we're in a pandemic. We're in the pandemic yes. and then um, the government, you know, yes. has several um, things they put in place programs for, that programs for they put in place mm -hmm. for aid, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they call rent forbearance. Okay. That's what they call mortgage forbearance. So if your tenant can pay, he does a rent forbearance. Okay. And same way you as a homeowner, you do a mortgage forbearance. Okay. So what that means is you're telling your mortgage company, I cannot pay right now because of the COVID, mm -hmm. I'm going to pay later. So got it. So you do encourage people. This is the best time. This is the best time to buy. What about the bidding wars? Because I know people are a little apprehensive because they're like, okay, it's a seller's market. People right. are gonna be bidding like crazy. You know, uh, let's say a house is going on for is listed for two hundred and fifty k. Right. Someone bids okay ten grand over. Right. Then now you have to bid twenty grand over. It's a bidding war. How do you even still encourage someone who's interested in buying a property okay. to even go ahead in this time? So that's that's where we come into play, right? Yes. As a professional, that's what we do, right? Yes. More things that we're going to discuss behind the scene, but for the purpose of answering this question, yes. whatever you offer on the house, mm -hmm. it still comes down to what the house is appraised for. That's true. So when the bank comes out, when mm -hmm. the appraiser comes, comes out to appraise the house, mm -hmm. Is giving the actual value of what the house is worth. So is that what you're gonna pay in terms? That's what you're gonna pay at the end of Got the day. It. So okay. it doesn't matter if the seller inflicts the price of the house. <laughs> yeah. But when the bank comes in to appraise the value of the house, mm -hmm. the seller is forced to sell at what the house is appraised for. Perfect. Okay. That's a little bit of professional this is advice. Good. That's why this is good. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Thank you. So yeah. you said that your your purpose for being in the industry is to make our lives listen, easier, right? Listen, th th this is, we were speaking earlier and I told yes. you, I want people in our community, yes. in our cycle to build mm -hmm. wealth. I'm just going to share a quick story with you, right? Yes. Before I got into real estate, one of the motivational factors was the house close to me, the, um, the owner of the house wanted to move outside the country mm -hmm. and he sold the house for $80,000. Okay. It's cheap. And the person that bought the house our Jewish brother, he mm. fixed the house with about $20,000, I would say, because oh, yeah. there was not much work to be done. Mm -hmm. And then the house was sold for $350,000. So he flipped. He came in, flipped, he flipped and the house. sold. So that's an mm. easy $250,000 profit, whatever you want to say. Wow. And and I was thinking to myself, if I, if I continue doing my 9 to 5, how long is it going to take me to... To actually make two hundred and fifty grand, true. and that deal was done in a month, and I'm wow. like, I probably have to work like twenty five years to oh, be yeah. able to, uh, to, to to get <laughs> that right. Get so that's right. what I want to encourage our people to do. I want to let them know that it is easy to buy a house. It's not rocket science. It is very easy. Mm -hmm. With fifteen thousand dollars in your account, mm -hmm. and with you calling me, you're getting your first property. Yeah. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So lastly, I heard that there's. Big news brewing in your life. <laughs> Interesting. I don't want to give it away, so I'm going to let you tell our viewers what's going on with you and what we should anticipate. Um, I know we'll care about it. A, a lot of things. A lot of things. You know. You know. A lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I kept thinking to myself, why haven't I done this earlier? Mm -hmm. I'm not only a real estate agent, I'm an, invest, I'm a real estate investor, investor. as well. Yes. So I look for properties, I buy properties, mm -hmm. and we flip. Okay. You know, we pull up a team together. Mm -hmm. If we don't have the money, we contribute 10,000 $10, each. Wow. We come up with this money mm -hmm. and then we'll buy a property and we'll flip it. 
All right, back to what she was asking me. Yeah, great news coming, you know. Uh, um, this week we're going to be closing on a, on a very big property. Wow. Yeah. We're going Congrats. to be closing on a very big property. Is it in and the States here? Right, it's, it's right here in New, New Jersey. Jersey. It's right wow. here in New Jersey. And, and it's actually okay. uh, somebody from our community. Oh, yeah. You know, the buyers are somebody from our community. Okay. And, um, yeah, we're really, really uh, excited about this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be big. Is it a residential property or is it a commercial? I don't want to give that away. Uh, but a customer I privacy. Was, I just want to know. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, okay. it's, it's a residential property, but it's a, oh, good. it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations Thank you. in Thank advance. You. Thank you. And can you also let our viewers know how to reach you. Okay. You, uh, are, you are our own. So I know, I know. Our own. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, my phone number is what? 862 215 7931. And I'm also on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. What's your Instagram uh, handle? It's Eberichi underscore OKK. Okay. E B E R E C H I underscore O K E K E. Well, thank you so much thank for that. You. It was thank a pleasure you. having you. Thank you. I know we wanted to keep this a little brief and not give too much away. Right. But thank you so much for making our time <laughs> to join you. us today. I appreciate that. And once again, you are watching Civic Entertainment Gossip Television. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you. I see you. I see you too.